Hello everyone, this is G3D View, hosted by G3D. I guess they're coming for everybody. Nobody is exempt. Everybody is going to get it from P. Diddy to Philly, young Philly. Now we have the Andrew Tate brothers going through their criminal case. What do you guys think? Is it the end of the Tate brothers? Would they survive this? Well, let's check and see. What's going against you? Welcome back. Let's get right into part three, where Joseph D. McBride is about to embarrass himself yet again. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. At the end of the day, they're going to be exonerated. They've been asking for a trial since Jump Street. Innocent men don't go, let's go to trial tomorrow. Andrew and Tristan be like, give me a damn trial. Bring these allegations out in court and let's have the fight. Standing on our 10 toes down, standing on our own two feet in this court and let's have the fight. Let's prove your case against me or go to hell. It could be another two years before they get a trial there. This is simply not reality. It's a failed flex. This case should have gone to trial months ago and would have if Andrew and Tristan hadn't kicked the dates down the road by filing non-stop appeals, which had not done them any good whatsoever. Out of desperation, they appealed the evidence exhibits and whether or not they were lawfully obtained. They lost. They appealed the use of CCTV video footage and lost. Then they appealed whether or not the investigators were properly trained on computer software being used for analysis, and they lost that appeal as well. We'll go through that list in detail during our indictment series. But suffice to say, nothing they tried has had an effect on the case moving forward, other than to delay the inevitable. In April of 2024, the court ruled that all evidence in the case file was collected legally and properly, and further determined that the trial can move forward. So what did the Tates do? They appealed that decision as well, telling the judge that their decision was unlawful. Now here we are, six months later, and the ruling on that appeal is due out shortly, potentially within a couple of days. There's every reason to believe that this appeal will very likely fail, as the others did, and the trial date will finally be set, which will also, finally, put to rest these tater trash rumors floating around on social media that the brothers are free men. But going back to what McBride is saying here about the big shot Tate brothers demanding a speedy trial on their own two feet to prove their innocence, well, once again, that's just absolute bullshit. If Andrew and Tristan went to the courthouse tomorrow and told the court, let's start the trial right away, prosecutors would 100% happily take them up on it. So how are they getting arrested then if, I mean, so the judge releases them, which is kind of interesting. How are they, these police able to go in and seize their property and freeze their money or whatever? So the, the way that they do it is they issue an arrest warrant. They say this is a regurgitation of human trafficking allegations. But like, how do they get a warrant for this? It, it gets to a point where a judge just says you're you're you're, you're out on bail, but pending you know trial or, or what is this? Right, you're out on bail. Essentially, if you were to analogize it to the American system, it'd be a bail pending appeal or bail pending trial, right? Going to stop here to give the tater tots a chance to absorb this information. As we said, the Tates are not free men. McBride himself says in the first truthful statement of this interview, the brothers are out on bail pending trial, and the asset seizures go hand in hand with the arrest warrant as proceeds of criminal activity. This is the Romanian process. These assets will be sold off to pay for court costs, incarceration costs, and victim injury settlements, which they are automatically entitled to as victims in the Romanian system. So they have a trial set or what? No, they don't. It could be another two years before they have a trial. And the whole idea is to lock them up and silence them and bankrupt them and cancel them to drag them through the mud and then say, oh, we're just going to give up in the end. But you've already destroyed my life. But these two guys are built different. They're truly, they're different men. Um, they are committed toward fighting this fight for themselves and for every other man who would come before them. They feel honor bound and duty bound to fight this fight because if they fall, they believe that, a, you know, there'll be a lot of other dominoes that fall after them. The dominoes that the Tates are most concerned about falling are likely the members of their own war room, who have been exposed as pimps and traffickers through the war room forum chat logs. One such leak allowed investigators to identify 45 victims in one fell swoop, all from a one-year time frame from March of 2019 to April of 2020. Thanks to Matt Shea from the BBC, we know who some of these people are from his documentary released in March 2023 called The Dangerous Rise of Andrew Tate. Here are some of the war room top officers. Jill Sullivan, codename Sartorial Shooter. Sartorial seems to be a fixer for the Tates based out of Dubai, referred to as their manager, a role that included trying to get Andrew Tate freed from prison and shipped to doctors in Dubai to deal with lung cancer that Andrew Tate didn't have. Then there's this Jagoff standing next to Jill, codenamed Alpha Wolf, who apparently missed his on-screen calling as a villain in Miami Vice. I'm Alpha Wolf. Okay. My role is to be Alpha Wolf. Okay, fair enough. 
Miles Sonkin, pseudonym Egi Semmelweis, codename Shi Yan Hui, a particularly evil degenerate who has pimped out his own wife and whose daughter he plans on trafficking when she becomes of age. He is a self-proclaimed wizard. And Jonathan Bow, codename Money Pilot, a pilot with Delta Airlines who was put on administrative leave by Delta after Matt Shea released another documentary called Andrew Tate, The Man Who Groomed the World. Money Pilot is often front and center at war room events. And that's just tip of the iceberg. But you can bet each one of these assholes that has come across the prosecutor's radar is going to be investigated for connections to the Tays, connections to organized crime, connections to money laundering, and or connections to human trafficking. One domino that has already fallen is Hustlers University professor Vlad Obuzik, pseudonym Joe Lampton, who was arrested around the same time as the Tays for the same types of crimes. This smooth-brained moron used the War Room Forum to post a video of the bruises he inflicted on his teenaged girlfriend then wondered why the cops came for him. Vlad is now named as a witness in the first criminal trial against the Tates, and he blames his association with the Tates for his arrest. So yeah, the Tates are worried about the fallout from this. Their pimp and trafficking network is very likely to come crashing down around their ears. I see, I've seen a lot of videos people have shared that on the surface are indefensible. Conver you know, him talking about young girls and, and girls that are underage and things like that by, uh, I would just say, American standards. The argument that I've heard is that, oh, but 16 is legal in other countries and in certain areas. Not that I think that makes, I mean, fine, I mean, maybe he doesn't go to jail for it, but it's still sure. indefensible. But I, I suppose if you're saying these that, that they've changed and they're, they're doing something different, then you got to give people credit for that to a certain degree. Tim needs to be educated on what is and what is not legal age worldwide. So we'll hit this point really hard for his benefit. Legal age in a particular country does not matter, and there are no needles to thread on the topic. Even if you're the world's most dangerous spy on a mission in Switzerland, and the German teenaged girl throws herself at you. I am from Germany, where the age of consent is 14. What is it, the Alabama of Europe? In many ways, yes, but we can talk about that in bed. No, we can't! Thanks to the U.S. extraterritorial sexual exploitation of child laws, Americans cannot have sex abroad with anybody under the age of 18. To do so equates to the statutory rape of a child and carries a 30-year sentence per victim. So it doesn't matter what the laws are in the country you're in, legal age of consent around the world for Americans is 18. Not 16, certainly not 14. Although Tristan Tate got pretty excited about 15-year-old virgins when he hit 30 years old for some reason. And I'm fucking all these... 15 year old, not 15, sorry, 16 year old women or 18 year old women, whatever the law is in America. 18? It's 18 usually. You get married at 16. All oh, right, in Romania, 16, sorry. Yeah. When you run game like me and meet the women who I meet and roll in the circles I meet, you meet beautiful virgins sometimes. Me, I'll do two or three virgins a year. When you have the taste saying things like this in public, they're teeing up their own lifetime convictions courtesy of the US DOJ if any of these children happen to come forward. And if Tim Pool had educated himself on that point in advance, he would have been able to chalk up some credibility here. He was obviously put off by the immoral clips he'd already seen, but he didn't know how incriminating they actually were. Andrew Tate's got a lot of money, but this is, it's pretty wild what's been going on. Yeah, it's, it's real wild. And look, people should criticize and be critical of the things that they said in the past. But what I will say is that they were in a much different position 10 years ago in their life. They were up and coming. They said things that had shock value. These are street guys from Luton, from England. They're also American citizens. And they said whatever they needed to say to get on the map to make a name for themselves. To readdress the claim that the two brothers would be ashamed of the things they were saying 10 years ago, maybe McBride could explain this clip from five years ago, when Andrew was talking with Anthony Dream Johnson from Manosphere's 21 Studios just ahead of the 21 convention 2019 on June 18th, 2019 in Warsaw, Poland. Once again, not to plug or anything, but in my course, we talk about weaponizing your attention because that's the only thing a man has. I say plug away. What's the website? It's, it's CobraTate.com, and okay. I've got a course on there that basically explains how I got girls to work for me. For Tate's PhD, right? It's a PhD course, yeah. Pimping Hose Degree. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I was wondering what PhD, it meant. PhD, Pimping Hose Degree. <laughs> I've seen it. I just didn't know what the PhD meant. I was like, is this his PhD in Pimpology? Like, what is this? <laughs> but um, this is who I am. This is what zero I Zero apology. So, yeah, zero apology. And I don't, it's not something I put on. It's not something I fake. People yeah. think I'm playing a character. It's like, yeah. no. This is who I am. This yes. is what I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bam. If you don't like yeah. it, don't follow me. You know, it's just, and I have, I have a relationship. I've been in a relationship for six years. Mm. I fuck anything that moves. She knows I do it. Yeah. And she stays with me anyway. Like, I do what I fucking want. Yeah, it's delusional. Yeah, they, it's they, delusional. They or how about the live stream that Tristan Tate did three years ago with John Anthony Lifestyle? Some very famous Tristan Tate quotes in that episode that streamed live November 26, 2021. John Anthony thumbs through Tristan's Conquest Diary folder named God Mode Game 
as Tristan is sucking back yet another 10-ounce tumbler of liquor with no ice. Here's Tristan bragging about the 17-year-old that he was hurting during sex for his own pleasure. Actually, this one, I can't see her body, but that's kind of a hot face. Oh, she, Olivia, Jesus Christ. I was the second man she ever fucked in her whole life. Beautiful, big, natural tits, so cute. Man, it, it hurt her at every moment that I was <laughs> doing it, but it felt good for me, so who gives a shit? <laughs> That's gonna win. That's gonna win over the ones that you lost during this podcast. If they heard that, that's bad. Who gives a shit? <laughs> to clarify, this is not ten years ago, McBride. Not even five. And as it turns out, the timing of this interview is pretty significant. I'm flying to Miami in 48 hours. My house is an absolute wreck. It's being renovated as we speak. But uh, nice. yeah, I squeezed you in before Miami, and, and here I am. Glad to be on the show. November 26, 2021, and Tristan is headed to Miami in 48 hours. We know now it was to meet the American victim and take her to the War Room Conference for their first date. For close to a decade, Joe, your clients have had absolutely no filter and no regrets about the crimes they bragged on committing until the self-snitching came home to roost. But as they began to grow and as they began to see that there was influence there, they began to realize that there was a responsibility that came with that influence. And they began to sharpen their minds and sharpen their message and gear it toward positivity and strength for young men. And that's what really pissed the government off. It wasn't like, oh, you were saying this stuff before. We were mad. They weren't coming for them then. They came for them as soon as they started saying a man is a man is a woman, a woman is a woman. Be strong. Do this. Be traditional. Blah, 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 blah. Then the government came from them. You can say a lot of the wild stuff. The government will never come for you. You start preaching traditional values and masking the excellence and they come for your head. This is a great example of the spin that Tate has been trying to get out about his situation ever since his arrest. That he's pissed off the government somehow by preaching traditional values to young men. We'll tell you what we've been telling people on Twitter spaces for the past year. The Tates are self-confessed international human trafficking child raping internet pimp pornographers who have self-snitched themselves to the point where the trial in Romania will be a mere formality. Double-edged sword for the government has made them bigger. Way bigger. Yeah, and so if if whatever it is they're doing, if and, and I'll I'll say it this way, um, if these criminal charges end up fizzling out and dissolving, these guys are going to be wealthier and more powerful than than they ever were before. Although the Tates might be enjoying a boost in social media right now, as they pretend to be rebels against the Matrix, once the trial begins and daily updates shatter the perception that Tater Tots have of their outlaw heroes, that fame will wane. When the Tates are convicted, they will be forced into radio silence. Here's the future that we expect to see for Andrew and Tristan. After their first conviction, there will be another trial for the larger case in Romania, and an expected conviction from that trial as well. Even according to Tate News, a Tate ally, in Romania alone, the brothers are now looking at possible life sentences. Once Romania is done with these guys, if they are still drawing breath, these two depends-wearing seniors will be boarding a plane to the UK for the criminal trial there that is already prepared to come down on their heads. This talk from Tim Poole about their criminal charges possibly fizzling out is not grounded in the reality of the three major criminal trials coming out against them. 100%. And another thing to do is to pay attention to the Florida case that we're litigating, right? Because we're litigating the same set of facts under different laws. It's the same set of facts in the American legal system. We're saying in the court to this woman that she defamed them, she hurt their reputation immeasurably, and she conspired against them to do all these other things, tortious interference, the business relationship, all these other technical terms. So McBride is obviously not keeping up with the Florida case. Tortious interference and conspiracy have already been stripped out, which makes sense. You cannot be a conspiracy of one, and tortious interference is interfering in a business relationship to the benefit of another competing business. So that was always a bullshit stab in the dark anyway, and any respectable lawyer would never have submitted that claim. Having read the true, complete, and accurate indictment documents in the Romanian case, we are certain that the Tates don't have a chance in hell of making their case in Romania, neither in Florida. But we're litigating the same exact facts in that court saying you knew that you were wrong, you lied, here's the proof that you lied. By the way, here's the history of you destroying men's lives before us. It's in a court, and all we need the court to do is to find the truth here. And the truth is, is that they're innocent. She conjured up a story with one of her friends to, to, to destroy their lives for whatever reason, and then she went on vacation. That's what happened. McBride is under the false impression that the American victim's history outside the scope of her relationship with Tristan matters at all. No aspect of her life prior to Tristan flying her to Romania on April 5th, 2022, or after the compound raid on April 11th, 2022. It's just dirty tactics that have no bearing. 
But remember what McBride said earlier? The latest arrests and everything? Process is the punishment. And their enemies in world governments and in the banking system and wherever else in the deep state took full advantage of this situation to exploit them and to keep them imprisoned for, I mean, for an extended period of time, which could be several more years. And it's wrong. Now McBride is telling Tim Pool the enemies of the Tates include world governments, world banks, and the deep state, claiming these organizations kept the Tates in prison for an extended period of time. Joe, they only did three months in a relative country club facility compared to where they're headed. Again, attributing deep state level manipulation of their case is a gross overestimation of the number of fucks that governments could actually give Andrew and Tristan Tate. What, what is their business now? Like, how do they make money and what, what do they do? You know, uh, right now there's Hustlers University. Um, they have- What is that? It's a university where you can go and they say, look, you don't need a college education to be somebody in this world, right? You don't need to go to any school to be somebody in this world. You can come and learn practical skills to how to make money online or how to interview people or how to network. You can come to our school. We're gonna give you transferable skills that'll help you succeed in the business marketplace in the world for $50, $100, $200, whatever it is. When you, when you juxtapose that against the, an Ivy League education is a big difference in, in, in the price. And you know, lots of times when you go to college or an Ivy League, Ivy League education, they don't even give you any practical skills for the real world. So it's about setting men up for practical application of skills in the real world to make money online. There's a lot to dissect here, but we can cut to the quick with a couple of quick points. First, Hustlers University is a pyramid scheme confirmed by the removal of the Tate apps from both Apple Store and Google Play. This point is irrefutable. Second, this is not by any stretch a university-level education rivaling Ivy League institutions on any front, and McBride telling you the courses or skills are transferable is a dead-ass lie. Third, and most importantly, and pay attention to this point, Andrew and Tristan Tate did not collect the wealth they flaunt through any of these garbage topics taught in their online platform. They did not get rich doing copywriting or dropshipping or e-commerce. They made their money trafficking women and apparently children into porn sites, as they've been telling you they were doing for years. I first made my millions of dollars the first time I ever became a millionaire was with webcam. I made so much money in this industry, I just can't quit. I'm addicted. Remember this valuable piece of advice, because it will do you a lot better than anything Tate is selling you, and will give it to you for free. There is no shortcut to success, and the only people who will tell you otherwise are the ones who will charge you money for their secret. The people whose only true source of income is the fools paying for their advice. But what he does not get a lot of attention for is all the human rights work that him and Tristan do with Tate Pledge. They give millions and millions of dollars all the time to build wells, to give food, to help people in war-torn villages, to help people restore their lives after one government or another has bombed them out. Tim Pool couldn't even catch McBride on that lie. Charities have already spoken out about how the Tates have promised but never delivered. It turns out that, according to investigative reporters who called BS on that claim, they have spent no more than 30,000 pounds on various charitable efforts as of January 2024. A good chunk of change, but nowhere near the 12 million reported by Tate. Another declaration made by the Tates was that they were assisting Ukrainian refugees fleeing the war zone, and they brought clothing, shoes, and food to the Ukrainian border. And all of this stuff here is actually emergency foods for my, um, I was, yeah, I was running this personally up to the border of Ukraine. I did seven trips up there to help the women and kids coming over. So I had coats, shoes, women's uh, clothing, children's clothing, all sorts of emergency foods. So me and, it, me and the Rolls Royce, but it was my biggest car. I wasn't trying to flex on people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me and the Rolls Royce and another van full of supplies did a bunch of trips up there. But wouldn't you know it, it was not out of the goodness of their heart. According to new information that came out September 9th, 2024, Tristan Tate and Luana Radu were planning to exploit Ukrainian refugees on webcam and OnlyFans, with Luana proudly announcing that she had already located two girls to join them at the house. Luana and Tristan talk about transporting them to Bucharest, where Tristan would bring them into his agency, Talos Management, advertised as the world's premier OnlyFans management agency. Until recently, the Twitter account for the agency had profiles for several of the Tate webcam girls. Here's one for Yasmina, who went by the screen name Mercedes Hill X, date September 6, 2021, and this one is Abigail Tyson, the mother of Tristan's daughter. There was a whiff of this activity in the Matt Shea BBC documentary, as Tate was introducing Matt to the layout of the renovated warehouse and its denizens, including Georgiana Nagal. I, I don't have loser friends. I like sitting down with people and discussing how we can make money from the conflict in Ukraine. That's what I enjoy. I don't want to talk about TV. Yep, the Tate brothers are totally vying for sainthood here. 
And now we get to the line in the interview that had people ready to reach through the computer to smack Joseph McBride right upside the head. These are good men who have done a lot of good for the world, right? Even if you accept all the allegations against them is true, the amount of good that they've done for the world tremendously outweighs the bad. And people don't see it because there's a very one-sided one narrative out there against them. According to McBride, even if the Tates trafficked over 60 women, even if a significant number of them suffered physical and sexual abuse at their hands, even if they trafficked minors and raped children, society should hand wave all that because of all the good they do in this world even though that claim of good has already been ripped apart. And here's some more nonsense as we wind down this buffet of misinformation. So you, you think that this, the charges in Romania ultimately are going to end with their exoneration, their victory in this? Yes. If they get a fair judge, 100%. No, no reasonable person could ever look at these facts and say that they're guilty of anything. There's literally no evidence. They don't have anything. As we tell the tater trash in social media forums, this claim shows how completely ignorant people are when it comes to the case. There are 75,000 pages submitted into evidence for the first case alone. 75 volumes of 1,000 pages each. And on top of the written documents, there are hundreds of hours of videos and CCTV footage. You're effectively taking girls, teaching them how to make unlimited money from home, and then making sure they give it all to you. All of this evidence has been appealed, reviewed, and cleared for submission by the court as part of the April 26, 2024 decision to go to trial. So, that's McBride with another big L to his tally. A guy who can't even keep his own origin story straight. So when I looked at the evidence against Andrew and Tristan, and I knew that they were being incarcerated wrongfully and wrongfully persecuted, not for what they did, but because of who, what they believe and what they say, I said, I have to get involved in this case. I have to do something for them because so much is at stake. So for me, legally, match made in heaven. How'd you end up meeting them and getting on the team? Some people in, in, uh, in, uh, in my world, in Tate's world, knew each other. And they said, hey, what about this guy? Check him out. They looked at me and said, it sounds good. Uh, we met, we met up, and, uh, you know, the rest is history. It, it was, uh, you went to Romania, right? Yeah, yeah. I went to Romania. I took, uh, went there with Tucker Carlson. I put that whole nice. interview together. Oh, nice. Yeah. What was your first impression of Anne and Tristan when you met them for the first time? You know, they honestly just, they were exact. So one thing about Andrew and Tristan, as you guys know, is they are who, who they are in person and online. And I, I recognize that immediately. Real recognizes real. Now, instead of having friends in common who introduced him to the brothers, the story is that he swooped in to save the day for them. And the final bit there about Andrew and Tristan being the same people in real life as they are online. They are who, who they are in person and online. Totally contradicts what a lot of tater tots say in defense of them. That these two guys are playing characters that you shouldn't take seriously. So do you think most of this case, like obviously you are litigating, you're in the courtroom, you're, you're filing all kinds of motions, I'm sure, but do you think a, a large part of this case is sort of rehabilitated, rehabilitating their public image? Because there are a lot of people who look at the Tate brothers and say like, yeah, I guess you inspire young men, but do you inspire them to do the right thing? You know, you've got lots of kids and lots of, like you're not sure. necessarily a traditional conservative man. Sure, so yes, uh, I part of my job, part of my duty is to restore their reputation in the court of law and in the court of public opinion, but nobody does it better for them than those two guys right there. Okay, the female host, Hannah Claire Brimlow, suggested that McBride is filing motions and appearing in court on behalf of the Tates. But as mentioned before, McBride is not licensed in Romania, so he's not doing either of those things in the criminal trial. And as it turns out, he's not doing it in Florida either in the civil case. We checked, and New York State registered lawyers do not enjoy reciprocity in the Florida court system to practice in Florida. McBride failed to correct Hannah's statement, so that would qualify as a lie by omission on a very important point. So that's the portion of the podcast dealing with the Tates, and it was non-stop nonsense being spewed by their self-proclaimed American legal counsel. As McBride told Tim Pool, he is counsel for both Andrew and Tristan Tate, and it's time to take a look at what that means. It means that McBride, as legal counsel and officer of the court, is allowed to, within the scope of existing laws, plead the case for his clients when they're defendants by trying to find fault with the testimony of witnesses or with the means by which evidence was collected and archived. What he is not allowed to do as legal counsel is lie about evidence, witnesses, or the facts at hand. He can offer alternative theories to substantiate reasonable doubt, but he may not make up facts to produce those theories. In short, a lawyer cannot lie on his client's behalf, neither in court nor in public. Lawyers are officers of the court, and as such, must operate within a code of ethics, which respects the principles of dignity, probity, and discretion. 
to lie, as McBride has done during this podcast, is below the dignity of the court. Probity, the qualities of having strong moral principles and honesty, have not been on display here. And he has shown zero discretion when relaying these falsehoods and misrepresentations on this program that is viewed around the world. At last count, that episode, Timcast IRL, just on YouTube, had over 337,000 views. And the channel itself has around 2 million subs. That is a very wide net to cast such deliberately false and easily debunked fake news across. To demonstrate what an absolute asshat McBride actually is, let's provide one more example. As we mentioned before, on September 9th, 2024, BBC's Panorama aired a special report about Andrew Tate called Andrew Tate Accused. Within this broadcast were several victims' accounts describing how Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate raped them and physically assaulted them. The program link was shared on Twitter by an account for BBC News presenter Victoria Derbyshire. With the description, Tate raped and strangled us. Women talk to BBC Panorama. And Joseph D. McBride's response to this post on his public Twitter account? 10 hysterical laughing icons. And the lawyer representing victims of Andrew Tate in the UK was having none of it. Politely ripping McBride a new asshole by telling him, I haven't felt the need or desire to engage with you directly before, Joseph, but there seems no choice but to challenge you to explain why reporting on the stories of victims of alleged rape is funny. As a representative of Andrew Tate, you are, of course, free to defend your client against such allegations, but to seemingly mock rape complainants is quite frankly weird. Why would you embarrass yourself and our profession like this? And that got us thinking, maybe it's about time someone saw fit to report this guy for breach of ethics and bringing shame to the legal profession. See, lawyers do have rules of professional conduct to follow as officers of the court. And that is all lawyers, even the slimy ones like McBride. One of these rules of conduct is an obligation to the truth, as outlined in the American Bar Association website under Model Rules of Professional Conduct Rule 4.1 truthfulness in statements to others, which reads, In the course of representing a client, a lawyer shall not knowingly a. make a false statement of material fact or law to a third person, or b. fail to disclose a material fact to a third person when disclosure is necessary to avoid assisting a criminal or fraudulent act by a client, unless disclosure is prohibited by Rule 1.6. This entire interview was McBride knowingly disseminating false information to an entire audience of third parties with the intent of influencing public and court opinion, as he stated here. What we were able to do was publish the truth of everything that happened related to that story into the Romanian complaint, right? The complaint has hundreds of paragraphs. The entire story is told there. Once that complaint was published, the Romanian prosecutor, the Romanian judges, the Romanian courts, the Romanian public consciousness, and certainly the Romanian defense team got a hold of it, was able, to, was able to educate the Romanian public and the court there. And since that's the case, McBride is in violation of the American Bar Association rules, so he should be up for disciplinary review. To aid in that endeavor, we went looking for his New York State Bar Registration number and contact details, easy to find on the New York State Unified Court System database. And there's a couple things on his file that stand out. First, the contact details for the McBride Law Firm, PLLC, on the official state registration website are not the same as what are published on his company website. Now, instead of a virtual office at 305 Broadway, McBride has told the New York Registry that he's got an office on the 6th floor at 99 Park Avenue. Except, according to CommercialSearch.com, the entire 31,000 square foot 6th floor of 99 Park Avenue is vacant and dividable and available for lease. And that's confirmed in the building website 99parkav.com as well. The 6th floor of 99 Park Ave is an unfinished, undivided space looking for a tenant. So, that's a little weird. But the other thing that jumps out is that McBride's registration with the state as an attorney expired in June of 2024, something he was meant to renew within 30 days of his birthday in April, meaning his registration to practice law in New York State is over four months delinquent as of the time of this broadcast. This was confirmed by a phone call direct to the New York State office by talking to a very lovely information clerk. So, if you believe this lawyer who is delinquently registered in the state where his virtual office is located, who apparently has a false physical address on file with the state, lies publicly every chance he gets about the details of his client's case, regarding an out-of-country trial he's not actually participating in, and has filed intimidation cases against young female human trafficking victims to name them publicly with the effect of allowing these victims to be harassed at home and at work, by an army of tater trash and also continues to publish unredacted court documents online. If you believe that McBride deserves to be reported to the necessary authorities for disciplinary action and censure, 
Here is all the publicly available information that you'll need to assist you with providing that much needed public service. And we're going to wrap it up there, but not without first saying something nice after being critical of Tate's American Legal Counsel. In surfing McBride's Twitter profile for as many photos and timeline points as possible, we came across a post of his that we absolutely agree with, posted on June 14th of 2023. It reads, Human traffickers are the scum of the earth and deserve the death penalty. Falsely accusing someone of human trafficking undercuts the importance of ending the practice and ruins innocent lives. Totally agree 100%, and we definitely hope that McBride tells the Romanian legal team to lead with this statement during their opening arguments. 